And normally what I do, because we, we don't know who's going to be viewing these webinars or what, what the situation is going to be, I, I like to show them what you see on the screen here at the beginning, how to get there to this page and how to register for a webinar and then how to uh, find the, you know, I usually click on a webinar that has, has occurred earlier and show them how to find the replay and um, how to access the notes and so they can go to the past webinars. And by that time, people at least can see that, you know, it's not just tonight's webinar, or the webinar they happen to be looking at on YouTube, but this is part of a, a larger series and they can see that in front of them. And the other, hi Holly, good to see you. Um, so the other thing that, that I like to do then is then I move to the webinar of the evening. And, and, and I just repeat, well, first of all, I, I introduce the person and, and just take clips from, from their, their bio and, and then repeat this part to set the intention and then turn it over to the, the person. So uh, that's, that's what I've been doing. In your case, you're introducing Loya and let's make sure that I've got her information here on this link. Okay, here's Loya and you've got, in this webinar you will learn, you've got her bio. So you have all the pieces. Of, of you know how to introduce Loya. So I just encourage you to um, be very familiar with with the webinar. Kind of imagine what that might involve, and and then also um, it, it's what I do is I I kind of play it by ear. Sometimes it just seems right to do a little more dialogue with the person, yeah. and Sometimes um, the person's taken off like a freight train and, and, and it seems like it's better for, to hold back and, and just let the person go. Um, you'll probably notice last week, you know, with, with Gus, you know, I, I, you know I, I thought, you know, if I start interjecting and do a dialogue, I'm gonna mess up your presentation. And, with Annie, I got the feeling, you know, dialogue might actually help bring it out. I, I don't know if it did, Annie, and I, I hope that. It cool. I okay. love interactive stuff. Okay, but you kind of get a feel for that. And uh, the important thing is just interject just enough if you're gonna do dialogue. I keep myself unmuted during the presentation, so me and the person are unmuted. And you probably can't see what's happening in these gray boxes as I mouse over them. But there is a mute, a blue mute button on everyone's box. And um, if somebody comes into the webinar and then there's a lot of disturbance in the background and they're not muted, um, it's it's important to go ahead and mute them. Here's a quick demo in how to sign into Zoom and locate your meeting and start it. Okay, here we go. So here's Zoom, we're at zoom.us, you can see in the upper left corner here. And so we're going to sign in. Here we go, and I'm just signing in here into my account. And the first thing you want to do is once you've signed in, you want to click here in the left column. You see where it says profile. Um, you want to click on meetings. So I'm going to click on meetings. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the meeting that pertains. Now, if you're doing an Achieving Your Optimal Health 
meeting. Here's here's one that's set up for September 4th. And here's one for September 11th. And let's take a look. Here's one for September 18th. And so what you do when you're ready to um, go ahead and and start that meeting the first thing you're going to do is just click on the meeting so click let's say we're doing the september 18th achieving your optimal health and so the next thing we do is well i guess it's not gonna it, normally up here it has a little button that says start this meeting now why isn't that button here right now because this meeting is scheduled for September 18th so let's go back and okay here we are meetings again here's one for today that that I that I called zoom demo for achieve your optimal health webinar moderators and so I'm gonna click on this click and now you see since it's today it has a little uh, button here that says start this meeting so again the way I, I got to this is I signed in to zoom you know went to zoom.us I signed in and then I uh, on the left column I clicked on meetings and I picked the meeting that pertains that you know that I want to moderate and click on that and then all that I need to do is start this meeting so I click on start this meeting okay it's launching okay it's going to check let me pull this over here uh, let me pull over these little boxes that are coming up so you can see everything okay so it's going to check join with computer audio fine i'll do that now i'm joining with the computer audio and you may not be hearing me actually speaking at this point so i may need to um uh, to splice this into the video now using the zoom um, recording okay and then of course you can start your video there's my video and you can see me okay here we go and what else and so you you change you know where your head is based on uh, if you got a laptop you can move it around back and forth till you get your head in the right spot which is my goal in life get your head in the right spot okay and then you can go ahead and share the screen by clicking this little green button share okay now you're seeing my face here if there were more um, viewers or, or more participants in this video you know once other people join their video is going to appear below 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 and um, when you open up a PowerPoint, here we go. Um, if they have a PowerPoint to present, um, you're not the presenter. Maybe there's another presenter that got a PowerPoint. Then take, you know, you don't don't do the presentation view of PowerPoint, but just go ahead and pull this over here. Now, other people in the presentation will see this as a gray box. They're not going to see videos during the presentation. They're not going to see participants. They just see a gray box. However, when you click on the replay, suddenly people are going to see um, in that replay video, they'll see all the people um, as they were presenting and talking. If the presenter is up here right below you, uh, that person's presenting. And they're also, you can look at them talking, which I think is a, a pretty cool thing because you got the presenter and you got what they're presenting out here. Okay, 
and that's why I don't go into the um, the slideshow view, you know, from current slide. Now you could do that, but I guarantee that most presenters are going to set their presentation up in such a way that, okay, let's look what happens if I did this. And I'll just do from current slide. Okay, now you see what the problem is. You see that there's no place you can move, let's say there's a whole um, vertical row of, of people here and you're moving this gray box around. Well, in the meantime, you're blocking out this content that you see from the live viewers and all they see is a gray box and there's no place you can put this box. Um, so no, and then, and then the next slide may be arranged differently. So, okay, I'm gonna get out of the slideshow view. There we go. So as you can see, sticking the, um, the videos of the presenter and participants over here actually makes for a pretty good um, present presentation and replay video. I know you've got the the menu up here that's a little um, clunky, but when it comes down to it, they're going to see you know people that look at the replay are going to see the entire slide. So that's why I choose to do it this way. And maybe you'll have a another way of doing it. You'll solve all these problems, but this is how I solve them. Okay, and then and then when you advance slides, you just you know either click on the slide. But if there's a row of presenters, how are you going to click on the slide? Um, you're going to be moving this around trying to get to the slide. You don't want to do that. So notice that this is highlighted. You can just take the down key of your computer keyboard and move slides down or back. And so you see that you've got pretty much full control of the slideshow. And um, if your presenter wants to have control of the slideshow and they share it from their screen, that's that's definitely fine. Uh, you might encourage them though to present using this type of view just so you're not dragging uh, the video screens around. And once again, the, the live viewers will just see a gray column instead of videos the, the only people that actually see the the videos are the ones who are watching the replay and then suddenly the videos appear so anyway um, those are some choices you have and let's go ahead and minimize this presentation now and um okay let's okay now here's something that's kind of important uh, I wanted to go back to the Zoom um, screen where you can see meetings and you can see my login and everything. You know what happens if you try to minimize this or find that Zoom login screen again? Um, by the way, the controls are on my other screen. Here we go. And so you can see the controls. It's good if you are a moderator just move these controls over to your second screen or you know place them somewhere um, now your presenter you're going to want to have them stop sharing um, when when they're done with their presentation because you cannot share the screen and, and take it back until they stop sharing and by virtue of the same fact um, at the beginning of the presentation, if you start the presentation and you have the screen, you're doing the screen share and and doing some of the things that that you saw earlier in this video, um, then the presenter wants to take over the screen. They're not going to be able to take over the screen until you hit stop share. So be sure and hit stop share. Whoever has the share. Um, needs to hit stop share before another person can share the screen. Uh, by the way, a little more um, detail here. Let's pull this down a little bit. 
Um, you can see participants, manage participants. Let's click that. Okay, and here I am. Um, now, what you can do is, okay, I can't mute myself, but um, on this column of videos, as you see presenters below me, there's a whole row of presenters. When you get down to the bottom there, you got to click on the bottom to see additional presenters that go beyond this row. Um, but anyway, presenters are going to come on board and uh, they may have a noisy background. They may have kids, dogs, uh, machines going in the background. You'll see a mute and unmute button up here. It's a little blue mute and unmute mute button. If you got a whole row of presenters and you're hearing noise, um, you can just go ahead and mute the ones that are causing the noise. Normally during a presentation, I keep myself unmuted and I have the presenter right below me. And But in order to be below me, they have to be the next person, the second person that signs on. So you might ask the presenter to come about 15 minutes early. So you and the presenter are there. Then you sign on first, the presenter signs on, then everyone else is below that. And that's kind of a good combination because it's you, the presenter, and then everyone else. And so what you can do in this case is you know that you want yourself and the presenter unmuted and just make sure you don't have a noisy background. Um, and, and then um, other people come on below. And if you hear noisy background, then you can just mouse over their video and the little blue buttons will be right here, the blue mute button. And you just mute um, people until you eliminate that sound. Um, I believe there's a mute. Yeah, what do you know? Um, here we go. There's a mute all button and an unmute all button. The problem is if you mute all, then you're going to mute yourself and the presenter. And then you got to go back and unmute, unmute the two. Uh, but, you know, if you got, if you had 20 people, 30 people on this presentation, 100 people, then um, what you and you heard a noise, you're not going to scroll through 100 people's videos trying to find out who's unmuted and making noise. You're just going to mute all very quickly, and then you're going to unmute yourself and the presenter. And that's another reason to make sure the presenter um, signs on immediately after you, um, about 15 minutes before the webinar. Um, you'll probably need to help the presenter to know how to share the screen, so it's good to um, to work through the controls a little bit with the presenter uh, before the webinar. And that's what you do in that 15 minutes before the webinar is you're helping the presenter to be comfortable sharing the screen and then giving the screen back to you. Um, working their PowerPoint, they may not, this may be the first time that they've worked a PowerPoint presentation. Um, they may ask you to do the PowerPoint presentation um, and place it on your screen and it's great if you've asked them ahead of time, please email me your PowerPoint presentation because I've had uh, more than once where um, a pres presenter has just been unable to share their PowerPoint presentation on their screen and I share it on my screen as a backup. And in that case, then they just need to say, uh, please click on the next screen or you can kind of be aware of when if they've got a bunch of bullets when they get to the last bullet and they're they're finished talking about that you just automatically click it it's it's kind of a flow you can get used to it but anyway these are um, tactics for moderating a webinar working with your presenters and um and of course you you want to gauge where whether a presenter is uh, is comfortable just going through their presentation. If that's the case, then let them go. Um, on the other on the other hand, if a presenter is more comfortable with the dialogue and you see them sharing in their PowerPoint a lot of technical stuff, but not giving any human examples, uh, it's it's a very good uh, cue for you to to go ahead and, and ask them, can you tell me um, what this condition, this medical condition is like? Have you experienced it with a person? And 
and you know give me an example that brings things to life so uh, you never want to have a presentation where it's just going through the presentation giving a whole lot of technical stuff you'll put your people to sleep but as soon as you begin that dialogue it creates a lot of energy dynamic energy now there's two of you involved and um and and, and you begin to draw out from that presenter examples and they're happy to share those examples normally and it, it brings the presentation to life and it wakes everyone else up because when they hear stories and examples your audience is going to wake up more so um so that is another key to moderating a presentation working with the presenter so is there anything else i want to share here when you're done with the meeting then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit stop share okay and you can see where well i guess you can't see because you can't see my screen anymore um what i see is a video of me it's become very large because i'm not sharing the screen and if you got a few other presenters there's going to be a large video of them too um, and then I mouse under that video and to the right, you will see uh, an end meeting link and you can end the meeting. But I'm going to share the screen once more really quick to, um, here we go, we're back, to show you a few other options here. Um, here are some speaker options. These are the options that I normally select and these seem to work well uh what else you know select a camera i've got a little webcam on my built into my laptop so i choose that if you plugged in a video you'd probably have that appear below here uh, you can always see your participants and click manage participants and and there's only me and of course you can mute and, and there's the little blue buttons mute rename um yeah, unmute all unmute all okay we're gonna close this because there's more um, you can hit chat and that's kind of good open up the chat box and drag it over to your second screen because a lot of people are going to communicate during the webinar by chat and so you you want to be able to watch that you want to drag that over to the screen before the webinar begins otherwise you're going to click on it it's going to it's going to pop right into the center of the screen everyone's going to see it not not a bad um, thing necessarily but much more um, it's, it's just nicer to already have it over on the other screen and um, what else do we have here under more um, you can pause recording, stop recording, um, and and once again, you can end the meeting right here. Um, one thing about recording that I'll say, if you're doing a webinar that I have set up, I've got this on automatic recording, and I'm going to give you, if, if I'm absent one week, I'm what I'm going to do is give you my login. You will go to zoom.us and log in using my login and then um, zoom will think that you are me and this is very important because zoom is going to record on my screen and if you are me it will record on your screen if you log in as someone other than me um, the recording is not going to happen on your screen because you're not the moderator <laughs> so make sure you sign in as me so that the recording will happen on your screen and i've set these recordings so that they happen automatically as soon as the webinar begins the recording begins so i'm going to hit the stop share button and there we go and now i'm going to hit the end meeting button and then put all this into a recording notice up here really quick up at the top here um, there is a um, little box that says recording and you can pause the recording don't do it because um, 
you don't know if you've got valuable content you're going to be missing and then you then you might forget to unpause it and uh, as as the meeting resumes or whatever so i just keep it going during the whole webinar and then um, edit it afterwards that way i haven't missed anything important so um, this will just let you know that it is recording that happens automatically so you shouldn't even need to be aware of this just leave it as it is and and do whatever else you um, want to do of course you can do full screen mode or leave it like this um, anyway that's that's pretty much i i hope that that this has given you everything you need oh what's this more mute participants on entry oh just a minute sorry more um, we didn't look at this link allow participants to unmute themselves allow participants to rename themselves play chime for enter exit okay so those things are happening right now i guess if you lock the meeting no one new can come on um, i never do that um, i never mute participants on entry i always greet them as they come in uh, but i do mute them if there's noise in the background so okay um let's just go ahead and let you moderate good luck you're going to do great and uh, it's a lot of fun to moderate one of these meetings and it's a great team that we have okay that should do it signing off And again, what you can see now, once you've signed off, here's where Zoom is automatically configuring the recording. And of course, it's going to take a while. And we're, we're not going to um, sit here during the whole thing. But um, well, I will, but I'll, I'll cut it short so you don't have to see the whole configuration of the video. Because I want to show you what happens after the video has been uh, configured. And I'll show you how I capture that video uh, and show you the folders that as they open up and, and where I can choose a folder and where I can actually create a new folder. Okay, be back in a minute. Okay, notice um, we're at 56% now, so it's moving right along. It's a short recording. Yours is going to probably take uh, a number of hours if you've got an entire webinar on here. But I want you to notice right under the progress bar, it says you may convert your recording later by double-clicking the .zoom file located in the recording fo folder. Well, if that is true and you can convert that, that file and we'll test that in a moment um, then you could make it a lot smaller probably by converting it to an mp4 i'm not sure what conversion choices there are we'll find out in a moment but um, if you can make it smaller then it's it's even easier to send but you don't want to make it too small because then i can't edit it Okay, the recording has finished configuring, and now it's asking me where I want to place that recording. So I am going to, I don't want to replace it in my, place it in my documents. I want to place it on the G drive, and I'm going to, you can see how you navigate to a different spot. Um, and I want to go to the Las Vegas area trails folder for my case. And you can see I'm navigating through all these folders, so maybe that's good. Um, and then I go to resources, and then here's achieving your optimal health. And so I'll click on that. Now, I want to create a folder. Um, so, um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on make a new folder. Oops, it put it up here. Um, let me, what is it doing way up there? That's not good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's go back here 
and I'm gonna, yeah, you gotta highlight the area. Okay, highlight this, then you click make a new folder. Ah, now it goes in the right place. So you get to learn through my mistakes. And I'm going to lightly click on this. Hmm, come on. I want to rename this. Okay, rename. And I'm going to name it Moderating a Webinar. Great. So that's the folder. I have highlighted that folder. When I click OK, there you go. You see the progress bar. It's gone into that folder. Now, let's go ahead and find that folder. Well, this opened up in another screen, so it shows me exactly where it is. However, let's say that um, you weren't watching that and so how are you going to find it? You, you got to navigate to where you place the folder. Las Vegas Area Trails Resources uh, Moderating Webinars Tutorial. And uh oh, says the folder is empty. Well, isn't that special? Um, where did it go? So we're just going to back out of this thing. Hmm. Okay. Where are you? This could be a good little experience because now you can see what happens in that frightening situation where you lose your Zoom file. Oh, wait a minute. Ha, ah, moderating a webinar. <laughs> okay, so I found it. And now you see you've got an audio only, you've got a playback, and you've got a Zoom O file. So let's take a closer look at this. And um, let's see. View, list, okay. Uh, view details okay I guess this is all that you're getting but it's the zoom o file and and you can see by mousing over it that it's 86.3 megabytes you're not going to be able to send it as an email attachment um, 22.56 minutes for this file um, so that's why you need to upload it to Dropbox now let's click on this and see why they were saying you can configure the video by clicking on it. So I just double clicked on it. Okay, not seeing where that's helping us. Uh, there's a playback. Let's click on that. Okay, that's not helping us at all. And there's an audio only. Anyway, okay, let's make this easy. Just um, move this over to your Dropbox, upload it to your Dropbox, send me the share link to the, to the folder where this is in, in your Dropbox. I've got Dropbox also, and, um, I'll get the, the webinar video file that way, or, uh, we can meet at a Starbucks and you can just, uh, bring your computer and, and give it to me there or bring a flash drive. Anyway, that should pretty much cover how to moderate a webinar and then get me the 
the folder so that I can then, uh, or give me the file of the webinar so that I can then edit the replay. Thank you for moderating. It's a fun job. It's not as tedious as this video. Um, so the best of luck to you. Okay. Bye-bye.